subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates hi guys rahul shah here trying to make investing accessible and profitable for the average investor now let's start today's session with a very interesting slide that should be up on your screens right now it's a list of 20 companies and what do you think of the quality of these companies just glance through the list once uh, you know there are names like tata chemicals and iit jindal saw jk paper now if you were to divide the business world into three different kinds of businesses you know tier one businesses tier two businesses and tier three businesses uh, tier three businesses are the ones which are lost making wealth destroying you know highly leveraged businesses that uh, you should not touch even with a 10 foot pole then i think you'll all agree that these are definitely tier two businesses and not tier one businesses because tier one businesses are the best quality businesses so these stocks definitely qualify as tier two businesses so that's a list of 20 tier two businesses now what do you think this portfolio would have done a portfolio of these 20 stocks would have done in the stock market between march 2020 and you know october 2021 how the portfolio would have performed well turns out a portfolio of these companies would have given 235 percent returns between march last year and october or this year and some of the stocks have done phenomenally well you know the second last name on the list hfcl is up more than eight times there's dcm shriram you know middle of the list which is a five bagger there's a lot of four baggers three baggers two baggers overall this portfolio has done phenomenally well uh two thirty five percent returns between march last year and you know october this year now let us turn our attention to tier one businesses the best quality businesses and uh the list is there on your screens. You know, stocks like Page Industries, GMM Fordler, Asian Paints, you know, Pedilite, Relaxo, Dabur, Jubilant Foodworks, Hindustan Unilever, HDFC Life Insurance, quality companies, you know, tier top tier businesses, companies that you would be proud to recommend to your friends, families, uh, you know, uh, companies which have given great shareholder returns over the years. So definitely a tier one portfolio of stocks. Now, between the same period, March 2020 and October 2021, how this portfolio would have done? Well, not bad. 116% returns. And some of the stocks have done well. You know, Astral, I think, is up more than three times. 300 rupees would have become 340 rupees. Afle or Affle, I don't know how, how you pronounce it. It's, it's you know, uh, more than a five-bagger. So some pretty big gains, but overall, uh, on a portfolio level, this portfolio of quality stocks has given 116% returns. So these are good returns, but they have definitely lagged the performance of the tier two businesses, the portfolio of tier two businesses. Why this has happened? Why is it that over the last year and a half, tier two businesses have done well than the top tier businesses? I'll tell you the reason, but before that, uh, let us see how both the portfolios have done vis-a-vis -vis the benchmark index. So if you look at the performance of these portfolios vis-a-vis -vis the Sensex, Sensex is up 101% in the same period. And both these portfolios have ended up outperforming the benchmark index. However, if you had not invested in the quality portfolio, the top tier business, and if you would put your money in an index fund, you wouldn't have been uh, disappointed a lot because the performance gap between top tier business and the Sensex is not, uh, uh, the gap is not very large, uh, only 15% gap, which I think is acceptable. However, the low PE business has really outshone all the other two portfolios. It has given a mind boggling return of 235%, a massive outperformance. So now it's important for me to uh, tell you how I have arrived at these two portfolios, low PE portfolio and a quality portfolio so that you get a better idea of the performances. Now what I've done is, as on March 31st, 2020, I have taken the top 500 companies in terms of market cap and I have excluded the ones with a debt to equity ratio of more than one times. I wanted to have companies with strong balance sheet. So I have included only those companies from the 500 top companies which have a debt to equity ratio of less than one times and then what i have done is for the low pe portfolio i have taken the top 20 names from lowest to you know uh low to high PE. so company with the lowest pe 
will uh, be the first company in the low PE portfolio and then uh, the list goes on such that no company in the low PE portfolio had a PE of more than 10 times back in March 2021. So a portfolio of companies with a debt to equity ratio of less than one times and a trailing 12 month price to earnings multiple of less than 10 times is what a low PE portfolio is all about. Quality portfolio on the other hand are companies where the PE has been arranged from highest to lowest which means that I have taken the best quality companies which have trading at a which are trading at a price to earnings multiple of more than 40 times 50 times and I have taken only the quality names. Now a lot of the uh, quite a few of the names when you arrange uh, you know when you make a list of high PE stocks for companies which are cyclical or companies where the PE was high because of one times earnings bump so I have excluded those companies and ensured that the quality portfolio uh, consisted of companies only with quality names so that's how I have made the two portfolios and it turns out that the low PE portfolio has managed to outperform the high PE portfolio sorry high quality portfolio by a significant margin. Now is this an aberration? Why is this happened? Now, logically uh, or uh, you know the common thinking in the market out there is you should always invest in a quality portfolio, you should always buy quality stocks but this chart has turned that logic on its head. Low PE portfolio, portfolio comprising of tier 2 stocks have managed to outperform the high quality portfolio. Now a lot of you would say that this is an aberration you know it has happened only in the last one and a half years and it may not happen in the future but I have solid reasons to believe that over the long term there is a strong possibility that a low P portfolio constructed in this manner may end up outperforming the high quality portfolio provided you follow certain principles certain guidelines and this is what my last slide is all about. What are the key takeaways from this smart and short case study on comparing the two portfolios? What is it that you know what are the le lessons that we should learn from the performance of these companies and whether these lessons are applicable across all uh, the entire market cycle across all time periods. So the lesson number one is <clears throat> you know you should take a group based approach and not look at individual winners. Now what I mean by this is a lot of the investors get carried away by the fact that uh, they build a high quality portfolio but uh, they get carried away by the fact that even uh, the they get carried away by the return of a high PE stock. Uh, it may happen that a couple of or a few high PE stocks in their portfolio may go on to give good returns but the others may not perform to that good an extent. Therefore it is very important to have a group based approach to investing and not just look at individual winners. Likewise in a low PE portfolio there could be a few bad apples, there could be a few companies which which you know give you losses or which do not perform as expected. But how does the entire group of low PE stocks uh, you know how does the entire group do that is uh, what matters and you should look at it uh, from a group based perspective and not you know individual stock perspective. So that's one of the lessons that one of the takeaways for me. Always look at the performance of the group and not look at individual winners. If you look at individual winners you may end up you know learning all the wrong lessons. Takeaway number two is paying premium for quality doesn't mean buy at any price. Now the mistake a lot of investors make is uh, you know of course it's true that quality stocks are seldom available cheap but this does not mean that you should buy quality stocks at any valuation. A broad thumb rule is that if a quality stock is available at more than twice the valuation of the benchmark index then maybe you should give that stock a pass or wait for the valuations to come down to reasonable levels. Now the valuations for the benchmark index Sensex back in March 2020 was around 1920 price to earnings multiple which means that if you are buying quality stocks which were trading at a price to earnings multiple of more than 40 times, 45 times, 50 times, there was a strong chance that you were investing in companies which may show an underperformance because of the high valuations in the medium term and that is exactly what happened. Because the quality stocks were trading at uh, you know more than two times the valuation of the benchmark index, the quality portfolio at least over a two to three year period ended up underperforming the 
low PE portfolio. So quality stocks, you should pay a premium for quality stocks, but please ensure that the premium is uh, not a great deal more than what you would pay for the benchmark index or for an you know average company. So that is something that you should always keep in mind. Takeaway number three is most stocks are cheap at a certain price and expensive at another. Now what I mean by this is tier two stocks may look expensive at you know at a valuation multiple of say 16, 17 times, but when the valuation multiple of tier two stocks falls below 10 times or it's almost at half of what the benchmark index is trading at, then that becomes a very attractive proposition. A portfolio of tier two stocks which are available at, which you bought at single digit price to earn is multiple. If they are decent companies, if they are tier two companies, that portfolio has a very strong chance of outperforming the benchmark index over the medium term period of two to three years. And this is exactly what happened. So a tier two stock may, may not be as, in terms of quality, as good as a top quality stock. But if it falls to very attractive valuations, then that that's giving the stock an opportunity to do well, to outperform the good quality stock you know, from a two to three year perspective. So you should keep that point in mind as well. So that was the third takeaway. Now, another takeaway or the takeaway number four is that in the short run, uh, in the short run, it is the PE re-rating that matters more than the earnings growth. Over the long term, it is the earnings growth that matters more than the PE re-rating. Now, another, the one very important point of differ the dif differentiation between tier two companies and top tier companies is that the intrinsic value of tier two companies, it either remains constant or it grows at a very slow rate. So if a tier two company is available, has an intrinsic value of rupees 100, that 100 would become 110, 120 over a three to five, three, five year period, or, or it may remain at 100 for a significant amount of time. So idea uh, for a, uh, the approach that you should take while investing in low PE stock is that you should buy it at rupees 50 or lower and then sell it at rupees 100. Uh, we should not, uh, once the stock reaches 100, uh, we should not try and, uh, you know, stay into the stock for long because by its very nature, uh, tier two companies are companies which do not increase their intrinsic value at a, uh, you know, high rate. Quality companies, on the other hand, uh, you know, they are known for increasing their intrinsic values every year and often at a very high rate. Now, what I mean by this is if a quality company has an intrinsic value of rupees 100, then the next year it can go up to 110, 115. Another year it can go up to, you know, the year after that it can go up to 120, 30. And so intrinsic value keeps on increasing for a high quality company. And that that's why uh, I think another related point and another key takeaway is that in, when you're investing in tier two companies, it's, it's very important for you to frequently rebalance your portfolio. Because you're investing in a company with a fixed intrinsic value and you're buying it at discount, once the gap has narrowed or once uh, the discount has gone, you should move out of that company and get into another low PE company. Quality company on the other hand, quality portfolio, you should consistently monitor it and see that the intrinsic value is increasing every year uh, and the quality is remaining intact. Quality companies are known for the competitive advantages and the growth rates. So you have to monitor the growth rate and ensure that the moat or the competitive advantage that a quality company has is either being maintained or you know it's it's growing at a the earnings are growing at a good pace. So the different ways of uh, monitoring the performance of these two portfolios, low PE portfolio, you have to frequently rebalance. If you're investing in a quality portfolio, you have to continuously monitor the portfolio for uh, ensuring that the quality is being sustained, the moat is being sustained and you know, it's also growing at a good enough pace. So those were some of my takeaways uh, from this, uh, you know, smart and short, uh, smart and sweet case study uh, of low PE portfolio and a quality PE portfolio. 
Now, which of the approaches one should follow? I think to each his own. Some people are of the opinion that they should follow the low PE approach, while other people of the opinion that they should stick to high quality companies. I think both approaches are fine uh, as long as you are following the as 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 long as you're keeping certain rules in mind. The rules that I just highlighted in the key takeaway section of you know this today's presentation. You can invest. You can. put together a portfolio of high quality companies but ensure that you do not pay too much for such companies as long as you paying a reasonable premium and not paying a very high premium you will end up doing well in a high quality portfolio over the long term of course you have to ensure that you're buying a quality stock it should not be a you know a tier 2 company masquerading as a tier 1 company likewise for low pe portfolio it should not, it should not be that it's a tier 3 company masquerading as tier 2 company as long as uh, you are investing in stocks which uh, which satisfy the parameters for each of these groups you're keeping the valuations in mind and you're frequently rebalancing the low p p portfolio and frequently monitoring the quality portfolio i think uh, you should do well over the long term so it's the choice is entirely yours uh, I have I personally have a soft corner for the low PE approach because I think that's easier to follow and uh, uh, easier to operate with uh, but there's no harm in following the high high quality portfolio approach as well so I'll leave it to you the final final decision so that's all from me today but uh, before I go do not forget to you know subscribe like comment and uh, share this video your feedback is very very important to us it helps us uh, bring better quality content to you so so do keep the feedback coming and i'll see you again next time thank you so much our new research uncovers some shocking truths behind today's hottest investment opportunity electric vehicles don't invest your money in ev stocks before seeing our research click here to sign up for our special event to know it all for free